Two weeks in a row, Dolphins fans. Two weeks where you, you you play well, you're in position to win. Hell, during the game, you think there's a really good chance that you are going to win it, but yet this team falls short once again. Another last second field goal. Two and six now, Miami Dolphins fans. I want to stick to today's game, today's loss um, in, in this recap video, but we have, I will say, officially reached the point where the conversation is about to be had where maybe this team's goals have to pivot. What are we looking for for an outcome of this season? We talk about it all the time, preseason, offseason. It was playoffs, maybe maybe a chance at a Super Bowl. And it's got to be gone, right? Two and six? Like I said, I don't want to talk too much about that today. I want to stick to today's game. But I, want to, I do want to hear from you, your thoughts on the game, your thoughts on the remainder of the season. Maybe the direction that you see this team going. I know the trade deadline is coming up here early next week. I'm going to save that for a video here within the next couple of days. Don't want to get into that as well right now. Well, let's talk about some of the, the things that really ended up costing us down the line. We'll start there today. And it's third and 14. Chop Robinson just got done celebrating his first career sack. All good, right? In that position, it's third and 14. The Buffalo Bills... In my opinion, they seemed likely content to, you're going to run the ball if they don't get a ton of yards, probably end up punting, play for overtime. That's where I thought this was going. Instead, you get the hard count. You get Chop, who just came off his, his career high, albeit a, a short career so far. Career high to maybe a career lower, you get that penalty, which brings it to third and nine, makes the Bills not really feel necessary to, to run the ball and play it all that safe. They take the shot down the field. They got it close to Keon Coleman. And what happens? Jordan Poyer, former Bill, got to put that in there, flagged for the personal foul with the hit to Keon Coleman's head. And quite honestly, the ball was already coming out. We have that luxury as fans with the recap and everything. But I think about a guy like Jordan Poyer and being a Dolphins fan, we saw a lot of him playing for the Bills and playing at a high level. Always seemed like a guy that really had it going on from a football IQ level. I tell you what, it, it went by the wayside today, and that's probably me putting it nicely. You got to be more aware in that situation. I'm not saying that it's, it, it's simple to do that. You're, you're a football player. You're going to go in there. I'm not saying don't even make contact. Lead with something else. Lead with your hands. Really let your hands try to do the job of knocking that ball. The refs in today's NFL – are going to call helmet to helmet hits pretty much whenever they can. Player safety is at an all time high. They're not going to let that go. Now, that play doesn't outright put the Bills in field goal range, but they only gained another seven yards before kicking that game winning 61 yard field goal. And now we could talk all game about our all video about how I felt content giving up a 61 yard field goal. Hell, I think if there was a little bit more time left on the clock, and it was fourth down in that situation, they might punt an outright play for overtime. I was content with, but what does Tyler Bass do? He makes it look like it would have been good from 70, and our Miami Dolphins do unfortunately fall to two and six. Ah, oh, that's, that's, that's rough. Let's talk about this offense a little bit. Uh, Tua goes 25 of 28. Nice completion percentage there. 231 yards through the air. He's got two touchdowns, no picks. He was sacked just once. He didn't handle the uh, the bad snap. Thank God it was only the one time it happened this week, but that led to the, the one sack that he took. But it was pretty obvious today what the game plan was. Run the ball, stick with the run, be efficient with the run. We did all that, and I would say, yeah, we, we succeeded in doing so. 31 carries as a team, 149 yards and a touchdown. That's 4.8 yards per carry. The distribution. Achan goes 12 for 63. He gets the touchdown on the ground. He also caught one. Mostert goes for 56 yards on 10 carries. He also has a costly fumble, which we'll talk more about here. And then Wright gets 18 yards on, on his six carries. Limited opportunities. Six is a little bit more than we have been seeing from him. But I think that his carries, all things considered, were pretty nice considering who which running backs had the, the most and least to work with. I would say he probably had the least to work with and still ended up getting a couple of nice carries out of there. But you give me those outright stats, you give me that carry distribution through this game, you give me that before the game, I'd have told you we've had a pretty good high chance of winning that game. We also got to give credit to our offensive line today. Um, so many times I thought our running backs were a handful of yards, four or five yards downfield, 
before they were even making contact with the running backs. Uh, we only gave up the one sack. And like I said, I'm putting that one on Tua more than anything. I'd have to rewatch the game probably to give better offensive uh, line analysis at this point in time. But for the most part, I thought they did a pretty good job of holding up pretty well. But alongside of running the ball, the other part of today's offensive game plan appeared to be what? We saw two as efficiency. It was quick. It was safe passes, which, like I said, executed very well. Tua had three incompletions. I believe two of them were throwaways. Pretty damn efficient and safe with the ball and accurate with the ball. Now, I will say, when you go into a game with this game plan, it does one thing. It limits your ability to play to one of our biggest strengths. <clears throat> which is hitting Tyreek Hill, hitting hitting Jalen Waddell for those chunk gains. And most games I would say, yeah, I don't want to limit that, but quite honestly, with the, with the too high shell that the Bills' defense has routinely played against us with the lack of deep shots that we've hit against them historically with Tua and McDaniel calling the plays, it's hard to get those completions in the first place. So I don't mind today's game plan. Tyreek goes for 80 yards on four grabs. Jalen Waddle had one of the most hilarious stat lines you're going to see. Two catches for minus four yards and a touchdown. If you didn't see the game, you'd say, what the hell did you just say? Waddle ended up taking the loss of the yards on the final play of the game where it was thrown to A-Chan, pitched it back to Waddle. Waddle went way back trying to get more yards. So Waddle's two completions, yes, did go for positive yards. He did score on one. He just ate a huge loss. Um, statistically on that on that final one but he was nowhere to be seen until that fourth quarter but that's kind of a byproduct of having this type of game plan so against the bills today i, I like that game plan i thought the execution wa was solid 20 27 points is typically enough to get the job done unfortunately it was not today let's talk a little bit about defensively can you remember a game that featured this many missed tackles I had a list of the missed tackles um, in my phone. I was keeping track during the game. I stopped counting on the play where I believe it was Khalil Shakir. Made about four Miami Dolphins defenders miss. Just a sloppy game in that, in that sense. And on top of that, you got what? Josh Allen scrambling for a first down on a third and 12. We, he, he seems to do it every single time he plays against us. We got Marcus May now two weeks in a row. You've got a chance to take down a defender in space. I know it's one of the hardest things to do as a defender. Once again, couldn't get it done today. Ray Davis scores on a long touchdown, which was beautifully executed. Give him credit as well. They, they called up the perfect pass, had the entire right side of the field uh, basically opened up. Our defense was missing in action. It was Marcus May and Ray Davis, and we just couldn't make the tackle in space. Boom, long touchdown for the Bills. Uh, the other thing that stood out to me in the first half, we talked about Josh Allen scrambling for the uh, the first and first down on the third and 12. How many times are our defenders going to fall for that patented Josh Allen pump fake where he's already running, what, 12 to 15 miles per hour? He's not going to throw it. <laughs> news, breaking news. He's not going to throw it. He's going to do that little pump fake. Our defenders are going to get off of their feet and he's going to go for an extra what, eight to 10 yards. He's never going to throw that ball, but yet we continue to fall for that. The, the Bills second half possessions today, touchdown, 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 field goal. We had some nice moments on defense. I thought in the, the first half, we'll talk a little bit about those here in some later game notes. But for the second straight week, this unit simply wasn't good enough. At the end of the game, when it counted, we give up that an additional on that last second field goal. Uh, let's talk about some other notes that I had from the game. Um, our first touchdown drive was a drive that I feel like as Miami Dolphins fans, we might get once every decade. 14 plays, 97 yards, over eight minutes taken off the clock. We finish it with a screen pass touchdown. To Devon A. Chan. Loved that drive, by the way. Like I said, what, what a unicorn drive. We never get those drives. Um, the Raheem Moster fumble, I talked about that earlier. First drive out of halftime. Absolutely brutal. Maybe it didn't feel as backbreaking because it didn't happen in the in the fourth quarter, but we have a nice drive going. We are up 10 to 6 coming out of halftime. An opportunity to put points on the board. If you kick a field goal, you're up a possession. If you go up, a, if you kick, get a touchdown, you're up two possessions. Instead, that's now two games recently where a Raheem Mostert fumble, you could argue, 
ultimately ended up costing us the game. Uh, moving on here, I know that Devon Achan scored on a screen inside the red zone. I think at one point in time, Mike McDaniel uh, maybe went to the well a few many times with those screen passes in that area. We call back-to-back screen passes. One goes to Achan, one goes to John New Smith when we were trailing 12 to 10. Neither of them gets into the end zone. We settle for three on that drive. We get points. We take the lead. But once again, it's one of those situations where we get – maybe a little bit more creative with play calling. Don't do something that now we did three times while being in the red zone near the 10 yard line, getting touchdown in that situation likely would have been a nice thing to, to have there to say the least. Um, it was good to see two uh, scrambling with confidence. I'll say on that fourth down play today. Uh, I think we all collectively held our breath when he went head first. Lucky for us, there wasn't a bills defender uh, nearby to draw that contact. Uh, but good to see him playing with that confidence, scrambling with that confidence. And then speaking of Tua, creating off script. It made it a point of emphasis this offseason. We saw it come to fruition today, moving around in the pocket, getting into position to throw that game-tying touchdown to Jalen Waddle. Earlier in the game as well, we saw him go to his third, fourth read a few different times today. So I like to see that growth. And one other area growth that we saw and that we've seen a bit recently here now with Tua the check downs are a thing. Remember last year and the year before where we almost refused to throw it to running backs on a check down? Like Tua just always tried to like make that play go a little bit further, ended up trying to push the ball, ball downfield, ended up into some, some turnover likely plays in a lot of situations. He's checking down now. He's giving it to Moster. He's giving it to A. Chan. And guess what? Those guys are good. Those guys are good as receiving backs. So that's some more growth. I like to see that being executed a little bit more. One, it keeps Tua healthy. And two, it limits those turnovers. Um, defensively, I talked about some nice things. It was nice for Jalen Ramsey to steal that possession early, right? That interception that he had on, on Josh Allen. We said he's been very careful with the ball. While it was a nice catch, ultimately, by Jalen Ramsey, I would say that's probably more of a bad play by Keon Coleman. Keon Coleman beats Jalen Ramsey on that slant pass. Josh Allen puts it right on him. I'm thinking that's going to end up being six. Ends up bobbling it, and all pros do what all pros do, and Jalen Ramsey made the best of a otherwise bad situation. So I'm going to give him credit, but Keon Coleman's got to work on that as a, coming from the Bills side of things. Saran Neal, talk about another current Dolphin that – used to play for the Bills that ended up kind of costing us a little bit today. Being called for holding on third down with seven minutes left to go was, like I said, I'll call it backbreaking, another thing that just kind of gets added to the line of things that went wrong late. But the Bills end up getting a first and goal. And what happens next? We give up the vintage Josh Allen touchdown pass where he's about to get sacked. He's about to get taken down to the ground. He can hardly see. I couldn't even tell you if this ball was placed there on accident or if it was on purpose. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. But the way it kind of squirted out of his hand, he put that ball in the more, most perfect place, for his tight end to catch it, and no Miami Dolphins defender to even lay a finger on it. So once again, Josh Allen proves to be the ultimate Dolphins killer. The guy's already a really good, great NFL quarterback, but for some reason, man, his play just gets heightened against us in the most crucial times and one final note jake B bailey jake bailey oh man that punt early on i'm gonna i'm gonna say it nice my 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 note that i have says something else jake bailey we got to work on getting a new punter next year let's just put it that way dolphins fans we're two and six we got a prime time a monday night football game on the road against the la rams on deck we're going to be back with previews of those games, but like I said, I'm also going to be doing a video about the trade deadline. Um, I'll get that out probably, hopefully here on uh, on Monday, obviously, with the deadline being, being early in the week. So I will be back with that. Like I said, though, we'll be talking a little bit more of maybe some, some changing of goals uh, with this team here moving forward because, yeah, six losses is probably a little bit too much to overcome even – even for that seven seed at this point in time, it's taken about a 10 and 10 and seven record the last couple of years. And that means you're going to have to what go, go eight and one over the next nine. That's going to be tough. <laughs> I got hope, but that's going to be tough. So like I said, let's hear your thoughts on the game. Maybe some changing of some goals. Uh, if you got any trade deadline stuff that you'd, that you got thoughts on that you'd like me to hit on in that next video, drop that in the comments as well. 
We're going to wrap it there, Miami Dolphins fans. Enjoy the rest of your night. Try to anyways. And until next time, fins up.